That leaves us with Tom Warren. I'm going to read you a letter to the editor that I've submitted to the Johns Creek Herald for publication hopefully next week that I think uh, we should all be aware of that things like this actually occur in our city and I think uh, it's Mr. something we should excuse me Mr. Warren if you'll please address the council oh sorry <laughs> dear editor has fake news reared its ugly head in Johns Creek I've started questioning the motives and leanings of those behind the Johns Creek Post. Every legitimate news organization has a masthead that lists the publisher, the editor, etc. The Johns Creek Post provides none of that information and at best is a gossipy blog. Uh, that serves really no real purpose other than to provide a forum for hurtful innuendo and half-truth. Who's behind the curtain? After some digging, I learned that a Johns Creek resident, Jennifer Jensen, operates the Johns Creek Post. Most residents of Johns Creek are savvy enough to detect fake news. Uh, and some mistakenly think that Johns Creek Post is a news source. It is not. Instead, it is a blog, an editorial espousing Ms. Jensen's personal opinions on issues throughout our city. In many cases, Ms. Jensen allows comments to be posted by readers anonymously or under various pseudonyms. And somebody uh, anonymously went through Willow or Zillow or whatever it is, got the value of my house and compared it to the other person. Pause you for one moment. Councilmember Andres. We're coming after a resident in a council meeting. Actually, it's a blog. blog. He's well, after a blog. Give me one. Give me one moment. Sure. If I may. Big difference. I'm Council member, you're you're. I'm you're concerned inquiry. about the optics that we're allowing this to happen. So one of our rules says that there cannot be personal attacks, and so I just want to make sure that we're we're either if we are or not venturing into the personal attack zone. Okay, thank you. Um, if, if the trolls on the post choose to remain anonymous, fairness and impartiality, humanity and accountability. Mr. Warren, I apologize. Thank you for your public comment. Okay, thank you. Can I say Have something? Thank you. I'm a little troubled. Councilman we just cut someone off when clearly we had interrupted them in their comments. Didn't we stop the time? The time should have been stopped. Uh, stopped. He, how do we know that didn't throw them off? I mean, that's just, I, Councilman we don't, we it just somewhere. bothers me. That's really, I, I understand. We, we talk about public comment and wanting people to do it, and then we interrupt them and do it. I mean, this is, it doesn't sit well with me. I'm sorry. This is very poorly. Again, I apologize. I felt the need to address an inquiry. I wasn't really addressing it. I understand that comment, but we probably should have given him some more time. Tom Warren. Council members and staff, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Tom Warren from Double Gate in Johns Creek. Last week I read my, a letter to the council I sent to the editor of the Johns Creek Herald expressing my concern over what many perceive as a clear and present danger to our community by the inaccurate and often anonymous blog known as the Johns Creek Post. That letter should appear in the upcoming edition of the Herald, and I wanted to make you aware of follow-up actions I've taken. Through a second letter to the Herald, I'll ask all current council members and other candidates for upcoming office to register whether or not they are aware of this blog.
and if they disprove of apparent misinformation and in some cases anonymous posts that as a matter of course have been regularly published in the Johns Creek Post. I will also request those candidates renounce the Johns Creek Post, identify any con campaign contributions or assistance they may have received from this blog and its contributors and refuse any further endorsement or contact. Finally, in a third letter, I'll publish the results of this query and highlight those candidates that decide to continue their partnership with the Johns Creek Post and its contributors. I'll maintain laser focus and intensity on any and all sources of this type of hurtful misinformation in Johns Creek. Please remember that democracy dies in the darkness. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, after last week of you guys not following your own protocol that you took an oath to, to uh, swore, uphold, and uh, the outrageous and unacceptable personal attack on me, I felt uh, to give myself the opportunity to give myself some personal praise. I'm the proud owner and publisher of the Johns Creek Post. I'm a Johns Creek taxpaying business owner, and I'm registered with the Secretary of State and also on LinkedIn. I don't hide. Mayor, you even announced my business here in the council chambers when I started. The Johns Creek Post mission is to cover the issues concerning the residents of Johns Creek in order to protect and improve the quality of life in our wonderful community. So how did the Johns Creek Post start? Let's take a few steps back. Four years ago, I received a rezoning notice to put in a drive through Polo Tropical Chicken fast food restaurant near my house. I came here to oppose this development as it was in a dangerous and dysfunctional intersection. I requested that you guys fix the lights to make it safer. I didn't like the way the decisions were being made, and so I came back and back again. I tried to fight the Dean Gardens rezoning and then came across the Super Tower documents. That was an epiphany for me in the community. The fact that you'd even consider something so outrageous, let alone pursue it, buy the land, get the easements, have the building permits issued for a radio tower that could be seen for miles and miles. I started the Stop the Tower website and literally stopped the tower. After that, my neighbors approached me to start another website for Johns Creek to keep the community informed and so the Johns Creek Post was born. I'm not a reporter, I'm a concerned resident. Johns Creek Post has more city links and content than any other source around, from contracts, zoning documents, draft proposals, budgets to videos. Time and again, city officials have challenged the content as not being factually correct, and yet the majority of the time, you are the source of the facts. So whatever happened to the intersection and traffic lights? It's still not addressed after raising the issue for three and a half years. Even the CAC listed as priority number one in the April 10th meeting. And then today, you finally discuss it. You spent 10 minutes and you only talked about the cost. Your staff didn't even have the correct amount allocated. Where is the performance criteria? Where's return of investments and what you want to spend? Uh, since your re-election almost four years ago, there have been over 90 work session meetings and retreats, plenty of time. How much time do you need to fix the problems? Another four years to grasp the concept that when a light is green, the following light should be green to keep the cars moving? Oh, and to circle back, Polo Tropical was approved like every, almost every other zoning Thank case. You, Traffic lights are issue number one. It should be priority number one. Thank you for your public comments. Yeah. You don't address it. Thank 